Okay, now you'll remember when I started talking to you about natural logs, I told you that it does some interesting things when we get onto the calculus of them. So we're going to have a look at that today with differentiating the natural log and e. So if y is equal to log x, we get this property that dy by dx equals 1 over x. Now you might remember from last year that when you got something like 1 over x and you tried to integrate it, you got two problems that you couldn't do. Now that we know log of x, we can integrate 1 over x to be log of x, the natural log of x. Also, if y equals e to the x, we get this beautiful property that dy by dx is also e to the x. It makes for some really nice ways of simplifying differentiating. Okay, so examples. Find dy by dx on the following. So y equals e to the 4x. Use the chain rule on this. Now most of the time you're not going to write this all out, but just to make it clear of what's happening, I am going to do it with this one. So u equals 4 to the x, therefore y equals e to the u. du by dx will be 4, dy by du is e to the u, so dy by dx, using the chain rule, will be those two multiplied together, which is 4e to the 4x. We'll do it with another one. So this is the same as 5e to the minus 3x. So u equals minus 3x and y equals 5e to the u. du by dx is minus 3, dy by du is 5e to the u. And dy by dx is those two multiplied together, which gives us minus 15e to the minus 3x. Now, a lot of these you'll skip straight to the answer when you've been practicing them. You'll be able to see that chain rule without needing to separate it out like this. Okay, some more examples. We're going to find dy by dx on the following. So y equals 6e to the 2x cubed minus 5. So dy by dx, I'm going to go straight to it. We're using the chain rule, so we need to differentiate that power and multiply it by this original function, since e to the something doesn't change. It's the same thing when you differentiate it. So we're going to get 6x as the derivative of that power. And then multiply it by that original function, because e to the x doesn't change when you differentiate it. And we get 36. Whoops, a little mistake. Hold on, I'll just fix that. There we go, 36x e to the 2x cubed minus 5. Alright, we'll have a go at a log one now. So y equals 5 times the natural log of x. So dy by dx is equal to 5 times 1 over x, just simple differentiating here. You differentiate log x and you get 1 over x. So that is 5 over x. Another one, y equals log of x squared plus 3. We need to use the chain rule on this one. So let u be x squared plus 3, then y equals log u. du by dx is 2x, and dy by du is 1 over u. So dy by dx is 2x times 1 over u which is 2x over x squared plus 3. Now this has got the nice property with natural logs. You can um, find a quick trick of doing this. You differentiate what's inside of that bracket and the derivative goes on the top, the original bracket goes on the bottom. Okay, and now our last example is going to involve all of this and a bit of the product rule as well. So here we have two things being multiplied together. We've got u is 2x cubed and v is log of x squared minus 2x. du by dx is 6x squared. dv by dx, we can use that thing that I just talked about where you differentiate what's inside the bracket of the log and you put it over the original of um, what was in that bracket. So that's the little trick for helping us with the differentiating log functions. So differentiate that bracket and you get 2x minus 2. And then on the bottom you keep the bracket as its original x squared minus 2x. So now the product rule looks like this. And we can tidy it up a little but not too much. It still looks pretty ugly but we've done as much as we can with it.